Hi friends, this is Pastor Lucas Pina from Coco Presbyterian Church. We are in our Sunday school class and we are uh, at, at the end of the Sunday school class. We're, we're in the book of Genesis and we're going through all the stories in, in Genesis. Unfortunately, we don't have all the lessons recorded because most of them we we did that in our in our church in our Sunday school class uh, in our fellowship hall. So we didn't we didn't have that uh, the recording thing. It's the COVID nineteen that uh, forced us to to do the recording thing. So and we are in the end of the book of Genesis, and the book of Genesis is a beautiful book because it tells us the beginning of everything the universe the human beings and the, and the, and the, the mess that we find ourselves the fall and the restoration and, the, and then the people of god through abraham and his family and all those uh, little by little we, it will kind of uh, funnel in the, in the in the people of god so it's a very interesting book beautiful book so if you if you have time, give a read, but we uh, give a, a chance and, and read and the book. It's a very interesting. We are today in the chapter 49. Before we get there, let me share with you. This is our there we go. This is our next uh, topic for our Sunday school class is the book of Acts. So I keep trying going back and forth old testament new testament so we don't we don't stay in the in one place for too long and people will kind of ah it's a, we know that story and uh, we already saw this and it's the same thing is so we we jump from new testament old testament topics and doctrines and so a little bit of everything. So the book of Acts is a beautiful book. So it's, a, it's the, 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 the story of the early church. So in three weeks, yes, we're going to start the book of Acts. So it, join us and, 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 and participate. And it's going to be interesting to, to see that. Uh, but today we're going to go to the Chapter 49, chapter 49. Let's go there. Chapter 49. This is what's going on here. Jacob knows that he is dying. Then chapter 49, one says, Then Jacob called for his sons and said, Gather around so I can tell you what will happen to you in days to come. And this is what uh, Jacob is doing here. And this is what he's going to do the whole chapter. Uh, son by son, he's going to tell them what is going to happen, not only with them personally, but with their family. And it's a, it's a very interesting uh, 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 thing because we will know, we will learn, and we don't have time to go to the details. Unfortunately, our time here, it's, uh, it's limited. But uh, it's, it's a kind of blessings and prophecy that Jacob will tell his children what's going to happen with them and with his uh, children and children's children and all that kind of thing. So he, he gathers together and he gives them the blessings. And he says, uh, the days to come, it's, uh, the, are the, that is the, the, the idea. I'm going to tell you what is going to happen. So verse 2 says, assembled and listen, sons of Jacob, listen to your father Israel. And then he's going to start with Reuben. <laughs> and that we, we already learned that, right? Reuben, because he is unstable and water, says, uh, uh, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling honor, excelling in power, turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel, for you went up, Onto your father's bed, on my couch, and defile it. And it's the guy messed it up once in that area, and it it, it was done. 
the, uh, uh, it's interesting because the son's inheritance in the ancient uh, uh, Near East could not be altered by a father's arbitrary decision. It's very interesting this. But such chains could be made after serious sexual offenses by the son against the family. And Reuben did that. The only thing that he could not do, because he would be the man, he would be the, 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 the leader of the clan. You know what I mean? The, 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 he would be after Jacob, he would be the boss. And he was a stable behavior. The concubine was a reckless and destructive uh, attitude that he had. And, uh, and it's kind of, no, you, you missed. You lost. You lost your position. And this is uh, what we, we have here. And then he goes to Simeon. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter their council. Let me not join their assembly. For they have killed men in their anger and hamstrung oxen as they pleased. Cursed be their anger so fierce and their fury so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. That is, a, that is another thing. Simeon and Levi. Simeon and Levi. Remember the, 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 the Shechem, they, they had problem with the daughter. The daughter was raped. And they, they said, well, if you circumcise, we're going to be your friends and you can marry. We marry your, your sisters and daughters and you can marry ours and everything is going to be okay so the guy decided to circumcise and then they went there and kill everybody and the guys could not do anything because they were circumcised and it's a kind of so they were going to divide they're going to scatter and uh, and after the uh, after the uh, exodus from egypt the tribe of simeon declines in importance and it's not even mentioned in Moses, in Deuteronomy 33, Moses gives the same thing about the tribes. And he doesn't even mention Simeon's tribe. It's, it's so sad. And, uh, and reflect that the Simeonites uh, are allotted some cities, scattered cities in the territory taken by the tribe of Judah. So this prophecy here is fulfilled. It's, it's a very interesting thing to learn that what Jacob is saying here, it's, it's going to pass. It's a prophecy that we can check. I said, did that happen? Yes, it happened. The same thing with, uh, with Lev Levi. Levi, later he will, uh, the tribe will redeem itself and they're going to become a very important tribe of uh, uh, priests. But they're not going to have land. They're going to live in cities spread all over the tribes. So again, they are, the prophecy will be fulfilled. They are going to be scared. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and they're going to they're spread all over. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a very, very interesting prophecy. They are going to scatter all of them. And, and this is what happened. And, uh, and then comes Judah. So Simeon and Levi, brothers of weapons and violence, their anger, of course, because their wrath is crude, they will be divided and scattered in Israel. And that happened. We just saw that that happened. And then comes the next one. The next one is Judah. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his coat to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will dark, be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. It's, 
it's a very powerful prophecy to Judah. Very powerful prophecy to Judah. So he's going. To, we saw that in the story. If you if you watch the, the video, if you are following us, uh, uh, it, it got to the point that the Judah start making decision, and and the, and the brother, the other brother, the Reuben, start kind of shading away, and Judah start taking charge. So when they got to Egypt, Judah was already the leader of the family. So uh, and uh, and this is what we have here. Uh, and, the, and the father says that the sons shall bow. It's a reference that from Judah will come the king. When they have king, right now they don't, but when they have the king. So the tribe will bow down to Judah's descendant, David. David is from Judah and his heroic uh, deeds. And then we have the lion's image. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Jesus in Revelation is called, Revelation 5.5 5 is called, And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. A mission to Jesus and called Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah. And Jacob, this is a prophecy from Jacob, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? The scepter shall not, the scepter shall not depart, and and this is uh, from David on. Judah is the king, uh, and, and all the kings, and goes to through the tribe of Judah, and all of them, and it's uh, it's uh, it's the choice of. So then, this prophecy here is a very accurate. Uh, prophecy and, and all the details and then he says uh, until and uh, it's very interesting because there is a, a debate on the on the on the on what that belongs so, until he to whom it belongs shall come and the the literal word is until Shiloh comes until Shiloh comes and people say well Shiloh was a place was an area in that uh, in that uh, in, in in the in the Canaan area but it's 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 my, no it's it is the Shiloh that is coming is not we're going there to Shiloh so it's a reference to to Jesus it's a reference to Jesus and then uh, and, and and it's a very interesting idea that Jesus is the one that will come so Judah will be important all the way. And it was, this prophecy again was fulfilled. Judah was, the scepter belongs to Judah all the way to Jesus. This is why sometimes we have a hard time with the genealogies in Matthew and in, in Luke. And because all those names, why we have that? Because that proves that Jesus has, Jesus is in the genealogy of the king. Of Judah, David. So it's very important to connect all the dots and say, you know what? Yes, it's right. The, the 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 kings will come from Judah, and they and they will, and they will be there. The donkeys, the coat, all those references. It's it's everything is fulfilled here. It's a, it's a, amazing how the 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 wine. And, uh, and representing the blood and all that kind of thing, and the robes in the blood of grapes, and and it's it's amazing all those references. And some, for them, there is kind of didn't make sense. But for now, for us that are now we're seeing the story all the way back and say, well, you know what, Jacob was on something here. He he know he he was saying things that were very interesting. The next one is the uh, Zebulon. Zebulon, he will settle by the sea, and he shall be a port for ships. His, his border will be at Sidon. And, uh, and, and so this is uh, Zebulon, and, uh, and he's going to be... But it, and this helps us to, when Joshua was dividing the land, he, those promises were important to help them to divide the land and see how those things were. We're going Issachar. Issachar is a raw bone donkey lying down among the sheep's beds. When he sees how good is his resting place and how pleasant is his land, 
He will bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to forced labor. And that is the problem with Issachar. He, uh, he failed to drive out the Canaanites. So he, he accepts that and we're going to live with them here in the tribe. Uh, trade the liberty for forced labor. So yes, we're going to be free, but we're going to be forced to, to work. And they did that. And they had problem with the Canaanites for a long time until Deborah and Barak. Barak, remember? Uh, well, it was in another study, <laughs> but Deborah and Barak they they uh, won the, the victory and and, and remove the yoke under the uh, uh, from from the Canaanites. But uh, it was it was a tough it was a tough. Uh, place for them, a tough place for them. Uh, and then we have Dan. Dan will provide, Dan will provide justice for his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan will be a snake by the roadside, a viper along the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider tumbles backward. I look for your deliverance, O oh Lord, a serpent. Judge, uh, the word Dan means judge. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, that is the, the, the word means. And it's going to be a, a serpent, though it's a small, and then it's dangerous and strike unexpectedly to overthrow large foes. And, uh, and we, we know this story because you know who is from Dan? Samson. Just one guy. One guy defeated all the Philistines, not all of them, but the, the, the leadership. He, he messed up the Philistine for one or one and a half or two generations because he killed all those leaders and princes and, and, and he strike with great destruction. So if you go to, and Sansom was from Dan, so it was a, it was a viper, it was just a, a little thing that make a, a lot of destruction, a lot of destruction. He'll be judged and he'll be a snake on the roadside. This is what Samson, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and he produced a lot of destruction. Then we have Gad. Verse 19 says, Gad will be attacked by a band of raiders, but he will attack them at their heels. So Gad, is a play of words here. It's, if you know Hebrew, it's a play of words with Gad that point the constant danger that Gad from his southern and eastern. So that is the region that Gad was. And with the neighbors, the neighbors was Ammon and Moab. So it was a very traditional enemies of Israel. And, and Gad was right there. So it was a constant danger, the fight, and all those kind of things. And uh, it's, a, it's a very, a very touchy situation with Gad. Uh, then we have Asher's. Food will be rich. He will provide delicacies fit for a king. And uh, 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 reference to the, 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 the uh, land, the land that Asher got was a very good land that they got. And they could provide a lot of things. And it's a, it's a very, very interesting uh, uh, Thing. Then we have Naphtali. This is a doe set free. Let's go there. He is a doe let loose that gives beautiful words. Naphtali that bears beautiful fawns. And this, uh, that is Naphtali. We don't have a lot of information on that. And then we have Joseph. And we cannot stop. We we'll, we'll just kind of <laughs> we just need to keep moving here and go to the to the, all the good stuff, that there is so many stuff here. Uh, and, and then he's going to talk about Joseph. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring, whose branches climb over a wall. With bitterness, archers attacked him. They shot at him with hostility. But his bow remained steady. His strong arm stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, because of your father's God who helps you. 
because of the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of the skies above, blessings of the deep springs below, blessings of the breast and womb. Your Father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, than the bounding bounty of the age-old hills. Let all this rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Wow. Joseph, can you believe that? Yes, that is, that is Joseph. All the blessings. It's, it's interesting. I don't know if you, if you notice, because uh, 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 Rachel was barren, and then finally uh, he, she gave birth to Joseph. And then it, 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 it produced the most fruitful tribe, Joseph, because then you, have, you know that has two tribes that come out of uh, 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 Joseph. And uh, the children of Joseph later seek to increase their territory because they, they grow so fast and so much that they come to Joseph, Joshua and said, look, the space that you gave to us, it is not enough room for our people. We need more space. And Joshua will say, look, you go to the land of parasites. The heifer says, take it. Go there, go there. There is a space there. You take it. And, and, they, and they did. And, uh, and, and then there is uh, something very interesting happened here. He said that because the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because the shepherd, rock of Israel, father's God, your father's God, who helps you because the almighty who blesses you, and uh, it's, it's very interesting because there is many names, many names of God, the multiplication of divine names here. Or Joseph, the blessing of Joseph is, is God's involvement, the Almighty One. Bless. And, uh, and it's, uh, the, the word bless here in this, uh, in this text for Joseph is used six times in this verse. It's, it's amazing what, uh, what is, what is going on here for Joseph. And uh, Jacob is making sure that Joseph is the guy. And he will, he will be important in the life of the of the brothers in the life of the brothers uh, so there is a text that says that uh, judah will be judah will be the leader in that sense but joseph will substitute the first brother so it's uh, it's reuben lost everything no, it's, uh, it's, it's very sad that uh, Reuben lost everything. And Joseph now, Judah got the, the, the kingdom, the leadership. But the firstborn rights stay with Joseph. Stay with Joseph. And it's a very, very interesting thing that we learn here in, the, in, this, in this text. Let me see if I can find that. No, it's not here. So, but it yes, that is a, this is what this is what happened. Then after Joseph, we have Benjamin, and this is what says Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey. In the evening, he divides the plunder. And uh, and Benjamin was he he was he was a tough tribe, a fierce reputation. The Benjamin. The Benjamites were fierce, fight, feisty, and it was, it, they, they have a, a fierce reputation in fighting, and, uh, and, and, they, and they became like that, and then in the, in the future they are going to uh, uh, connect with the Judas tribe. No, they are going to be on the north, yeah, they are going to be on the north, and, uh, and, and, and it's going to be a tough, tough situation for the 
for the tribes to fight them. It's a, it's a very, it's a very, it's a wolf, a ravenous wolf that devours the prey and divides the plunder. It's, it's a very, very tough, tough one. And finally, we have the, the, the chapter ends. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them, giving each the blessing appropriate to him. Then he gave these instructions. I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephraim, the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah near Manhi in Canaan, which Abraham bought along with the field of Burial as a burial place from Ephraim, the Hittite. There Abraham and his wife, Sarah, was buried. There Isaac and his uh, wife, Rebekah, was buried. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished giving instructions to his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. It's. Uh, it's a very, uh, a very touching moment when he finished the whole, the whole thing. And Jacob dies at the age of 147. And uh, the physicians of, in Egypt embalmed Jacob for 40 days, and the Egyptians whipped for 70 days. And we're going to see this in the, in the next, in the next. Uh, chapter uh, next week in our final lesson. But it's interesting. Uh, one thing that is interesting here is that Leah is going to be the one. Finally, Jacob will recognize Leah as his first wife. She was officially, but he loved Rachel. But to be buried, he said, okay, she, I'm going to be buried there. Abram, his wife. Isaac, his wife, and myself and Leah. And it's a very interesting uh, thing that we, we, have, we have here. This chapter here, if you go to uh, Deuteronomy 33, uh, you're going to see Moses doing almost the same thing, going tribe by tribe and tell them. And, uh, and it's very interesting because those things, they were passed through generations. It was a kind of prophecy that God gave to, to Jacob and then gave to Moses, and they pass on. And all those tribes, some tribes, they just kind of disappear in that sense. They mix. Some tribes stay, some tribes stay strong. Some tribes, uh, they were able to keep track of everything and it's very interesting to see that in all the genealogies and you're going to see that if you go to the book of chronicles first chronicles you're going to see all those genealogies coming down tribe by tribe and it's it's very interesting to see how they were able to keep that and, and these words here they were true in that sense those prophecies they were fulfilled and, uh, and it's amazing to see hundreds and hundreds of years later. Yes, Jacob was right. Jacob was right. And it's, uh, it's amazing to see that happening. So this is our, our, our tribe. And next week, we're going to do the, uh, the, the last chapter in, uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 50. Let me just go to the next one, yes. And, and then after that, we're going to start our adventure in the book of Acts. When Jesus died, he's res he resurrected. What happened after that? So book of Acts, it uh, tells us what happened after the resurrection of Jesus. It uh, and, and tells the story of, of the church for, for that period of time. Uh, and it's a very interesting book beautiful book with a lot of stories a lot of adventures and we can see how they start how the church started and it's it's going to be fun to walk through that book okay 
Uh, again, we're glad that you're here with us. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this book, the book of Genesis. We thank you for the lessons. We thank you for how amazing your word is, O oh Lord, and the prophecies being fulfilled in the lives, in the lives of those uh, children of Jacob and we. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you because you are a faithful God. Bless us, help us to learn, help us to grow in your, uh, uh, in your word, and, and help us to live the life that you want us to live. Be with us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, friends, thank you for coming. I'll see you next, next Sunday, okay? God bless you.